Well, hello, my friends. Thanks for joining me, Jim Campbell, as we talk all things trucking. We are reaching a very dangerous impasse where the Biden administration and their EPA is attempting to enact rules and regulations onto the trucking industry as well as the rest of America that are clearly not feasible at this point in time. Okay, the Biden administration's recent final rule setting new carbon emission standards for the truck makers could be overturned if Republicans in Congress, the American Trucking Association, and OIDA, which is the Owner Operator Independent Driver Association, and the truckers across America have anything to say about it. This past March, I did a report on the Biden administration's overzealous and far left agenda that was using his administration's EPA to force an all electric America down everyone's collective throats. These new rule changes are set to take effect June 21st. Check this out. The EPA just recently released the new standards for greenhouse gas emissions phase three uh, for all heavy duty vehicles, including delivery trucks, refuse haulers, public utility uh, trucks, transit, shuttle, school buses, tractors such as day calves or sleepers. In other words, it's affecting us all. Back in 2022, EPA tried to overreach. They thought that they could make laws and enforce laws. While well, somebody sued them, took them to Supreme Court, Supreme Court slapped them around a little bit with a six to three decision and said, no, no, no. The Biden administration is continuing their unprecedented push to meet their commitment to the Paris Climate Agreement, which was re-entered into by the Biden administration upon taking office after President Trump had previously pulled America out of that group. In order to appease the climate control crowd, the Biden administration is requiring more than 55% of total Class 4 through Class 8 vehicle sales must be zero emission by the year 2030. That's right, by the year 2030. Doesn't that cause you to raise an eyebrow? A number of experts testified before the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Companies representing all segments of the trucking industry were invited, and each one of them warned that a staggering $1 trillion price tag in the short term is what it would take to switch over. And, and that's just for the infrastructure and doesn't take into account the cost to each trucking company in terms of revamping their fleets to an all-electric fleet, nor the cost to the American people, who in turn will be footing the bill when it comes down to it in terms of higher cost of product they purchase. Todd Spencer, president of OIDA, which is the Owner-Operator Independent Driver Association, said that small truckers could be regulated out of existence if the EPA's rule goes into effect. Spencer went on to say this could have devastating effects on the reliability of America's supply chain and ultimately the cost and availability of consumer goods. Local mom-and-pop trucking businesses would be suffocated by the sheer cost and operational challenges of effectively mandating EV trucks. Another speaker at the congressional hearing was Andrew Boyle, who is currently serving as the chairman of the American Trucking Association, which is the largest national trade association for the trucking industry. The ATA is a federation of 50 affiliated state trucking associations. Check this out. While we share the passion for EVs and cars in late duty vehicles, projecting an automotive construct onto trucking industry dynamics is a massive mistake. And let me be clear, if battery electric trucks had adequate range, there was adequate charging infrastructure, and utilities could deliver the power, we truckers would be delighted. But let me explain our reality. Today, a clean diesel truck can spend 15 minutes fueling anywhere in the country and then have a range of about 1,200 miles before fueling again. In contrast, today's long haul battery electric trucks have a range of about 150 to maybe 330 miles and can take up to 10 hours to charge. 
So for the same 1,200 mile journey, we'd go from 15 minutes of fueling a clean diesel truck once to charging today's BEV four to eight times for dozens and dozens of hours. And this is assuming there are charges where you need them. We would need far more trucks to haul the same amount of freight, and each of those trucks would cost two to three times a comparable diesel truck. Converting the US fleet of class eight trucks to battery electric would require a one trillion dollar investment, which ultimately would flow to consumers. We welcome the opportunity to provide real world, factual, and constructive input into the legislative and rulemaking process. We recognize that most people don't understand how the trucking industry works behind the scenes to supply the American public. But we can't allow unrealistic timelines, a state patchwork, and technically unachievable regulations to set trucking up for failure. Remember, we deliver food, medicine, baby formula. Failure is not merely inconvenient, it's catastrophic. In addition to trying force an all electric America down everyone's collective throats without a chance to step back and take a breath in between bites, the tax and spend liberals also want to add a 12% excise tax onto the cost of every brand new truck. Meanwhile, in addition to trying to overturn these crazy new emission standards, the American Trucking Association, OIDA, the American Truck Dealers Association, and other trucking uh, carrier groups are also trying to repeal this proposed 12% federal excise tax on the price of a new truck. It's as if the Biden administration wants to put the trucking industry out of business. The cost of these all-electric tractors are double what the cost of a diesel tractor is, and the weight of these electric battery trucks will severely limit the amount of freight weight that each tractor could haul. Thusly, a company would need twice as many electric tractors to haul the same amount of freight that a single diesel-powered tractor could haul. Check this out. The trucks are heavy, you said like 8,000 pounds for a battery. Does that mean that you can't haul as much? Your payload is reduced, is that correct? That's correct, which means more trucks to haul the same amount of freight. So you're gonna need more trucks on the road. Does that mean that consumers are gonna to have to put up with more trucks on the road as they're driving around, right? There's gonna be more traffic? Certainly. How many more trucks we talk? Yeah, so, so we have uh, members of, our, of ATA who have you know, limited scope operations where it be, they're testing BEVs. And what they found is that they need about a three to two or occasionally two to one ratio of trucks, meaning like for every one, the, the routes and missions that one truck would do in the internal combustion engine, reliability was high. They now have to use two BEVs due to charging downtime, reliability, et cetera. But the, the performance in cold weather is not just it's, unproven, it's proven to be horrible. And I just can't imagine pushing this standard on on North Dakota. That's right, sir. So the, so the battery degrades in cold conditions up to about a third. So that range I talked about, 180, right. 150 to 330, it's degraded by 30%. Is range fairly important in the trucking industry? Is that uh, if yeah. you want to talk about range anxiety, we truckers would need therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I bet. Yeah. Um, it's worth noting, to your point, if we were to convert the entire U.S. trucking fleet to battery electric, we would need to commandeer global production of lithium for more than seven years. Yeah. That's the scale of the problem we're talking about. And it's not that we can't overcome challenges, but we don't overcome them by pretending they don't exist. By the time you add the weight to the truck, what does that do to the cargo? Because there are weight limits, obviously. Sure, yeah, so we have, so each truck, heavy duty truck, uh, electric vehicle battery would be about 8,000 pounds. And they're mm -hmm. typically in sets of two, three, or four. Mm -hmm. So as you add weight, in that respect, you reduce yeah. the payload capacity. Right. Then there is also the issue of the trucking industry needing double the amount of drivers, since companies will now need double the amount of trucks to handle the movement of freight around the United States. Truckers that now have a problem finding parking spots, think about what that's going to do with all these other extra trucks on the highway now. Where's parking going to come from? Then there's the issue of hours of service for the drivers. If a trucker can only drive between two and 300 miles between each electric charge, that will severely hamper 
and create problems with the driver's hours of service and well and with delivery times and also trying to find charging stations that won't force the driver to add out of route miles to simply recharge these units the Biden administration with their idiot secretary of transportation Pete Buttigieg clearly did not think this issue out in a logical and rational way before trying to implement it. Instead, they're putting America on a path of possible destruction as they continue to put Americans so far in the debt that we may never climb out of this hole. Look at this. Just so we're clear on the scale of the issue, each electric vehicle battery for a heavy-duty truck weighs 8,000 pounds, and you need at least two of them. So we're talking the weight of, you know, four or five cars. And our, my friends and peers in the industry nationwide who have tried to make efforts to put in, say, hey, I'm going to convert a dozen forklifts to electric, or I want to tee up a facility for 30 electric trucks. There is no power. The utilities come back, the cities come back and say, is this some kind of joke? One friend tried to put in, in Illinois, a, uh, a facility, tee it up for 30 trucks electrification. The city came back and said, this is some kind of joke. You're asking for more draw than the entire city requires. And just to give you an idea, 30, 50 trucks, that's like a five, six megawatt application. The factory that makes the trucks is a two megawatt factory. And we'd be delighted to have more choices. If the power and in infrastructure is not available, it's not even a consideration for trucking. Yet California wants to make it immediate, effective next January. That's the only choice. No diesel trucks, no OEM is going to be compliant with the, with the California CARB standard for a diesel electric truck starting in January. They'll have product due to credits and so forth, but none is going to be technically compliant. What are we talking about here? We're trying to serve the country and supply uh, commodities that are essential to everyday life. So before any of the, this is not kind of a choice. We have the cart before the horse right now. A study released and commissioned by the Clean Freight Coalition, whose members include the American Trucking Association, the LTL Carriers of America, the truck dealers, and truck stop operators, concluded that commercial trucking would have to invest more than $620 billion in charging infrastructure, with another $370 billion needed to upgrade America's grid networks to meet the demand in electricity. That's $1 trillion that would need to be spent and implemented from the outset that does not take into account the cost of new battery-operated trucks, which according to the market research can be two to three times more expensive than diesel trucks. On average, a diesel class eight truck costs roughly $180,000. Well, a comparable Battery electric truck would cost over $400,000 per truck. And it's not just the trucking industry that is affected by what these crazy all-electric yahoos want to accomplish in such a short term. It's all of America. Listen to this. By 2030, electric vehicles are forecast to make up over half of all new cars sold in the U.S. That could put a big strain on our nation's electric grid, an aging system that was built for a world that runs on fossil fuels. But now, Electrify Everything has become a strategy and a mantra for the clean energy movement, calling for the electrification of transportation, but also of space heating for homes and offices, household appliances like stoves, and, to the extent possible, processes like iron, steel, and chemical production. About 60% of electricity generation in the U.S. still comes from fossil fuels. And so electrifying all of these sectors isn't a climate solution unless we also invest in a major build-out of renewables. That means we need major changes to the grid, more high-voltage transmission lines to transport electricity from new wind and solar power plants to the areas where it's needed most, smaller distribution lines and transformers for last-mile electricity delivery, and hardware like inverters that allows customers with home batteries, EVs, and solar panels to feed excess electricity back into the grid. But it's not going to be cheap. In a study commissioned by the California Public Utilities Commission, Schumabon's grid analytics company Kavala forecasts that California alone will have to spend $50 billion by 2035 in distribution grid upgrades to meet its ambitious EV targets. And that's just one state's transportation sector. When you carry this through to the whole country and you think about beneficial electrification, we're probably talking about a number that looks more like $3.5 to $5 trillion. 
I think right now, people have an overly simplistic view of what electrification of transportation means. If the nation doesn't match the EV boom with a comparable boom in grid infrastructure buildout, Shumavan says that drivers can expect charging difficulties. That could look like long queues or only being able to charge at certain times and places. And an overly strained grid will be more vulnerable to extreme weather events and prone to blackouts. About 38% of utility-scale electricity in the U.S. comes from natural gas, 23% from coal, 20% from nuclear, and about 18% from renewables. While the renewable share is growing, today's grid just wasn't designed with wind and solar in mind. The Congressional Review Act resolution of disapproval in an attempt to push back on the lunatic and unrealistic standards that the Biden administration wants to impose on America. If the resolution is approved by both houses of Congress and sent to Joe Biden, in all likelihood, he's going to veto it just to appease the far left climate control greenies. However, Congress can override Biden's veto which would effectively nullify Biden's EPA greenhouse gas emission standards for heavy-duty trucks, and it would be overturned. For this reason, I implore everyone listening to this to hop onto Google and search for the email and or phone number of your state's representative or state senator and let them know your feelings on this issue. Keep in mind, it's usually the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. So squeak loudly, my friends. Take care, be well, talk to you later. Bye-bye.